Coming up on Inside Education, the best of the best has been chosen. Find out who will help lead the Mobile County Public Schools JROTC Student Cadet Program. Plus, it's a major financial gift to help with the restoration efforts of historic Barton Academy. So how is that money to be used? We'll tell you just a moment. Join us. It's all coming your way next on Inside Education. Hi, and welcome to Inside Education, the show that takes you inside the classroom to show you what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Helena Tyler. Did you know that Mobile County Public Schools has opened four newly built schools in the last four years? The system has constructed new buildings at Calcedever, Whitley, and Taylor White Elementary Schools, and now at Citronelle High School. Nowadays, school buildings and classrooms in the Mobile County Public Schools are furnished with the latest tools designed for 21st century learning, and even buildings, constructions, and current buildings updated. They're all designed to the most modern building code standards. Constructing new schools and updating current ones is a big task. So how is it all possible? Well, it's all part of a five-year construction bond that's designated or designed for the sole purpose of maintaining the facilities. For the students at Citronelle High School, the start of the school year meant the opening of a new school building. The new state-of-the-art 96,000 square foot building is the first phase of a $28 million project. That also includes the renovation of the old high school building into a vocational campus. Citronelle's principal, Randy Campbell, says the pride of having a new building is not only felt throughout the school, but throughout the community. We've had a lot of different groups come through and just ooh and ah about it. We had the largest turnout for our parenting uh, day that we've ever had. We had an open house. We had the largest turnout for open house than we've ever had, and we took people around the building and let them tour and, and see the building. It's a lot of excitement in this community, and it's a good thing. This is just one of many projects. It's part of the $100 million in construction projects undertaken by Mobile County Public Schools throughout the county. In 2012, the school system bonded the funds to be used for new school construction and school renovations. Inner city schools, county schools, north, east, west, south, we spread it out to address our most critical needs throughout the county. Now nearing the end of the five-year building plan project, facilities manager Tommy Sheffield says they're on track to meeting their proposed schedule. In 2012, there were over $286,000 in construction projects completed. With more than $49 million in 2013, $18.2 million in 2014, $71.7 million in 2015, and over $13.6 million in 2016. All that money's local. We're putting it right back here in our local economy. We're hiring local architects, local engineers. The general contractor who is local, homegrown mobile local contractors, and they're pushing it out to all the local subs, the local vendors, the local material suppliers. So if we have fed the community $100 million in bricks and mortars, it all comes back to us through their tax bases. Included within that five-year plan were schools at Tanner Williams Elementary, Taylor White Elementary, Lott Middle School, and the total renovations of Phillips Preparatory School. In addition, Murphy High School has undergone $14 million in restoration projects to repair and replace facilities damaged by the 2012 Christmas tornado. Also, work continues on the new Chastang Fournier K-8 school. A $14 million, 93,000 square foot facility that is scheduled for completion in spring of 2017. The new phase of the building program will focus on school infrastructure. During the next few years, the Facilities Department plans on spending $5 million on replacing and updating air conditioners and another $7 million on roof replacements. 
Well, Alabama's oldest public school has received a major financial contribution to help with its renovation efforts. A local foundation has given a one and a quarter million dollar donation to renovate Barton Academy in downtown Mobile. The donation comes from the Ben May Charitable Trust and will be used to help establish the Barton Academy for Advanced World Studies. Once the work is completed, the Innovative Academy for grades 6 through 12 will teach global commerce, international relations, and foreign language skills through rigorous courses. The Ben Mays Trust considers this a challenge grant as the Barton Academy Foundation has a goal to raise a total of $12 million to renovate the interior of the historic campus. Uh, it is on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, it was built between 1836 and 1839 in the Greek Revival style and is actually Alabama's oldest public school building and is the birthplace of public education in Alabama. So it is, from a preservation standpoint, it's one of the most important buildings that we have in our community. This is the largest donation to date for a project to restore Barton Academy. Mobile County Public Schools has invested $4 million to restore the exterior of the building. The Ben May Charitable Trust has a long history of supporting some of Mobile's most successful civic, cultural, and education organizations. Well, there's another sizable donation made, and this time to Murphy High School. Minnesota Vikings defensive back, Captain Munnerlin. He's donated $50,000 to his alma mater for needed renovations to the school's weight room. Munnerlin was in town recently for his 10-year class reunion. He said the donation was his way of giving back to his high school and his community. Munnerlin is currently in his eighth year in the NFL where he's played with the Minnesota Vikings and the Carolina Panthers. Well, there was a special ceremony recently held that recognized the best of the best in the public school's JROTC program. That's how Mobile County Public School's JROTC director, Robert Barrow, describes the five cadets who recently were honored as brigade commanders for the 2016-2017 school year. The five honorees were chosen from about 2,000 cadets in the district, 12 high schools. They received their leadership cords at a ceremony held in their honor. But these young people will have all sorts of scholarship opportunities uh, at the end of this school year. And things like this help when they put that on their resume and their applications. It's a huge, huge boost to get this because this is a, a very highly competitive uh, position that they're holding. And they represent, like I said, the very best of the best. It's truly an honor. It's truly an honor. Um, I say it gives me not a greater span of influence, but it lets me go to each school and influence them with all the lessons I've learned. So it's a big, it's a big job, and I'm, I'm ready to fill the shoes. <laughs> The students are Cadet Brigade Commander Ayan Danny of Theodore, Cadet Brigade Command Sergeant Major Christopher Wilhite of Baker, and Deputy Br Brigade Commanders Danielle Blitch of Baker, Dakota Parnell of Mary G. Montgomery, and Brooke Long of Citronelle. The student cadets are also in the top 10% of their class academically, and they're involved in multiple activities. And there's a current project underway at BC Rain High School, which is challenging students to look beyond today and imagine the future. It's called Project AIM, and its target is to change the way students think. Our Crystal Johnson visited BC Rain School, where she talked to students, teachers, and volunteers about this lifestyle program aimed at changing lives. Freshmen at BC Rain High School are developing strategies to work toward their life goals through a mentoring program called Project AIM. Based on the theory of self, Project AIM encourages students to imagine positive futures and to discuss how current behaviors can be an obstruction to a successful adult life. The program, which is facilitated by the Mobile Police Department through BC Rain's Share OTC program, challenges students to think about their goals and work toward them instead of getting sidetracked by risky behavior. I feel that with this program, we kind of lead them the way, get them ideas, place in their minds certain things they want to do in life, even as for reaching out for their goals, even not just for themselves, but for their family as well. I mean, because you have a lot of kids that have different ideas, they just don't know how to let it out. 
and with this program, to me, I feel like they're kind of a way to express themselves more, you know, just by engaging with their peers and talking amongst other peers and other their peers talking about what their future goals or something they want to do. That's, you know, I feel that more helpful. Students spend a class period every Tuesday with mentors from the police department who will help them develop strategies toward meeting their life goals. They are also afforded the chance to listen to guest speakers and ask questions about careers and job opportunities. Since all BC Rain freshmen are required to take JROTC, all will go through Project AIM. One of the goals of the program is to help students build confidence and avoid peer pressure. Work on having a positive future and try your best not to have a negative future. Like, watch who you hang around, like your peers, like, because some of your peers can persuade you to do bad things that you don't want to do. Hopefully this program can put them in the right direction, uh, put them on the right path, because it's easy to get off track. Um, you know, most kids that we deal with, they, they just find themselves in a bad situation. So if you can pull them out of just for only an hour, two hours a day, um, you have a chance with that, that student. So that's my main goal is to pull them away from that and let them know they got more to gain by going in a different direction. Project AIM was developed in Birmingham and is now used all over the country. It was initially implemented at LaFleur High School last year before moving here to BC Rain. Reporting for Inside Education, I'm Crystal Smith. Well, don't move. We have more Inside Education coming your way. Up next, we'll take a look at a gardening project, and it's bringing a community and school closer together. Stay with us. This story and more after the break. My name is Savannah Creel. I go to Phillips Preparatory, and my favorite thing is being able to learn Spanish. My favorite teacher is Miss Inman. She was my seventh grade math teacher, and she really helped me prepare for Algebra One. I'm involved in National Honor Society. I'm an ambassador. I'm in math team, and I was a part of the volleyball team. The ambassador, whenever a family comes and they're willing to look at Phillips to see if their child wants to come here, then the ambassador gets to go and show them around and explain what happens here at Phillips, and we also do other things like we just finished packing Christmas shoe boxes to send to Honduras. At Phillips, most of the classes are more advanced, like Miss Heron. She's always telling us what's going to happen in high school, how's it, how Phillips is going to help us. We're always doing things that are more high school or college prep. Children thirst for knowledge, and the Big Station 93BLX saw an opportunity to fulfill this by partnering with the Mobile County Public School System. Together, they established the 93BLX Rolling Reading Program. On Thursdays, DJs from the station stop by a selected elementary school to read and interact with the kids. This allows the DJs to help kids foster a love for reading and get them excited about all the new things they will learn and discover by reading a book. Reading is fun, and it starts with us. The more parents are involved in school, the more likely it is a child will succeed. Children with involved parents and attend school regularly make better grades and have better social skills. Every involved parent makes a difference. Get involved. Ask about your child's day. Explain how your education matters. Parent involvement, it matters. You can find more information on parent involvement at mcpss.com. Welcome back to Inside Education. 
1,000 babies born at USA Children's and Women's Hospital will receive a special gift from the hospital and Mobile County Public Schools. Through a special partnership, the newborns will receive a copy of the book, Read to Your Bunny, where the author encourages a mom to read to her bunny 20 minutes a day. School board member Dr. Bill Foster had the idea of giving parents a book so they can start reading to them in the hospital. The gift is a great addition, he said, to the diapers and other items new parents take home with them. Research shows that by reading to a baby a few minutes a day, parents can bond with their children and start a lifetime of learning. USA Children's and Women's Hospital Administrator says this partnership will help establish good habits from the very beginning of the baby's life. And 40% of Mobile County is babies are born at USA Children's and Women's Hospital. Well, there's a construction project that's taking place in the Maysville community. It's being built from the ground up and it involves the community, local area businesses and the local high school there. It's the Maysville Community Garden Project, and as Brian Ashmore tells us, the hopes of the garden is to plant a seed that will help grow the community. Students from Williamson High School and Williamson Middle Grades Preparatory Academy are planting the seeds for community involvement through their agri-science program. Aided by community volunteers and industry partners, students built raised beds behind the school for a vegetable garden that will serve as an important part of the new program. Students will plant and grow vegetables in the garden for use at the school and in the community. This is the foundation for a small urban farm that we'll have here and it'll be for the students here at Williamson but uh, also for the community members as well, churches and um, people who live in this community um, for their access as well. Students measure the boards then cut and drill them together under the watchful eyes of volunteers from Alabama Power BAE Systems, Mount Hebron Church, and Auburn University. I appreciate them coming out here to teach us various skills that we'll need on the, on the job. I think it's a, a, a great opportunity for us to show real life skills and hands-on skills to the students, so we're, we're happy to be a part of this. School officials are hoping that local churches and community members will continue their involvement, enjoying the students in tending the garden, as well as enjoying what it produces. Well, what we're looking for is to start developing relationships. You know, we're literally going to be planting a seed in a little while, but we want to be planting a seed of a relationship and a pathway for these students so they know how to go from school to business and success. So it's all about having the right environment, developing that relationship, and follow through. So this is the first step for these kids to start in that path towards success. Reporting for Inside Education, I'm Brian Ashmore. Halliday said the students will start by growing winter vegetables before transitioning to spring and summer vegetables. There are also plans for citrus trees and berries. Well, it's official. The Blount High School football stadium is now known as the Harris Terry Stadium. Ben Harris, the legendary former football coach, was on hand for the field dedication ceremony. Ben Harris accepted the head coach position at Blount High School back in 1988. He inherited a program that for years sat at the bottom of a Class 5A ranking. During Harris's tenure, tenure as coach, the Leopards competed for seven state titles and winning for. But Harris says it was the lesson that were taught to his player off the field that truly made the difference. We just try to make a difference. We try to show them that it was a better way. We try to take them to church. We try to make them do the right thing in school. We were just real playing. We had no idea we was going to win state championship. We were just trying to come over here and then make a difference with the, with the kids' life. But the Lord had blessed us. And it's, it's a great honor to be part of, part of this statement with Coach Terry because I knew him. He was, it's a great feeling. A big occasion, well deserving of Coach Harris. He played an instrumental role in my life, and uh, I contributed a lot of my success to him. So uh, it was an opportunity for me to come, and I had to be here, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Coach Albert Terry served 17 years as Blunt's head coach from 1964 to 1980. Well, have you ever thought of how much work goes into taking the next big thing all the way from an idea to a business? Well, students had a chance to learn just how to do that recently during Startup Weekend, a Techstars program powered by Google for entrepreneurs. 
Students competed and had 60 seconds to pitch an idea from business to be started from scratch. Students from Murphy High School were part of a team that placed second in the event, and the team from BC Rain, well, it pitched an idea that landed them in the top 10. Well, it's time for a commercial break. When we come back, we'll introduce you to some teachers who are truly award worthy. Stay with us. I love seeing children learn and I love seeing them that moment that it just clicks with them it's like a light bulb that's going off um, and just ever since that moment where I was helping a child and that light bulb went off it was I knew that this is what I should do. Here at Mary B. Austin we are changing the way things are done in education. We're doing more hands-on learning, more um, collaboration and communication, the four C's, creativity, um, and we're getting those students together to work on things. Um, the students are actually the teachers. They're teaching one another um, and I'm just there to make sure things are going in the right direction. So more hands-on, um, more researching on their part um, where they're taking an active role. I want them to always remember that perseverance is key, that they have to persevere. And even though something is hard and it might be difficult for them at the moment to just keep working at it and persevere and they will always succeed. The Mobile County Public Schools Signature Academies program offers a variety of specialized curriculum for highly interested and motivated students. These academies provide students with choices ranging from aviation to healthcare, advanced information technology to international studies, from engineering to coastal studies. These high quality hands-on programs prepare students for careers readily available in Mobile County. Signature Academies program. It starts with us. I started off at Fondy Elementary, then I went to Azalea Middle School, and then Davidson High School for my high school years. The Mobile County Public School System prepared me for my career by showing me why it was so important to give back. I am involved with the Big Brother Big Sister program, and I've been paired with a young boy that was in the third grade and is now finishing up the fourth grade, and it gives me an opportunity to give back and help mentor him. Hello and thanks for staying with us. Hutchins Elementary teacher Julie Neidhart has received the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science. She traveled to Washington, D.C. recently to receive the award from the White House. Neidhart is one of only three elementary school teachers in Alabama chosen for the honor. She received a citation signed by President Barack Obama and a $10,000 award from the National Science Foundation. Neidhart has been a teacher in Mobile County Public Schools for 18 years, previously at Dawes Intermediate and Sims Elementary. And congratulations are in order for Lisa Fry, a first grade teacher at E.R. Dixon Elementary School, as she has been named to the Metro Mobile Reading Council's Teacher of the Year in recognition of her leadership in promoting literacy. Fry received the award at the Ben May Main Library and will be recognized at the annual Alabama Reading Association Conference in Huntsville. E.R. Dixon principal Katrina Ken said Fry makes learning come alive for her students through the use of digital tools like Kahoot Interactive exercises in class and the Talents Unlimited program, which encourages critical thinking. Well, there is so much going on within the Mobile County Public Schools with awards. Now we would like to take a moment to hear from the superintendent, Mrs. Martha Peak, about the award-winning schools that are within the district. And that's the subject of our today's Superintendent Minute. Hello, I'm Martha Peake, Superintendent of the Mobile County Public Schools. We have some of the top schools in the state and the nation in our school system. We have 13 National Blue Ribbon Schools, and in addition, this year, George Hall Elementary and Wilmer Elementary Schools were named National Title I Schools of Distinction. 
at the state level. Also this year, O'Rourke Elementary and Davidson High School were named Class Banner Schools. Award-winning schools, it starts with us in the Mobile County Public Schools. Mobile County Public School students gathered recently at the Aircraft Pavilion at Battleship Park to ring the bell in commemoration of the anniversary of the signing of the United States Constitution. Joining the students at the ceremony were Superintendent Martha Peake and representatives of the Mobile City Council and Alabama State Board of Education. In addition, U.S. Representative Bradley Byrne visited Dodge Elementary School and talking to students there about the importance of the Constitution. You study the Constitution to learn more about your country to go back in history. This was a, um, a great educational opportunity and involved some adults so that the children could understand the process rather, you know, rather than reading out of a book, which is very important, but to have a real world experience. Students also commemorated the anniversary of the writing of the Star Spangled Banner recently. As fifth graders from several schools participated in a project sponsored by local chapters of the Daughters of the American Revolution and the Daughters of 1812 to study the origins of our country's national anthem. And the students took part in a National Star Spangled Banner Day assembly in recognition of the 202nd anniversary of the writing of the poem by Francis Scott Key. The Star Spangled Banner would later be set to music and become our national anthem. We will show a video of Mary Pickerskill who made the flag, the gigantic flag that's now in the Smithsonian, which is still there, raggedy but magnificent. And then we're going to tell them more details about the circumstances of the writing. And we think that they will value the song more if they know the importance of what was happening at that time. As part of Patriotic Education Week in Mobile, as proclaimed by Mayor Sandy Stimson, fifth grader Emily Dixon of Council Traditional School was invited to sing the national anthem at a meeting of the Mobile City Council. Stay with us. We'll be right back. As Alabama's first and largest school system, the Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. Hi, I'm Todd. And I'm Terry, and we'd like to invite you to join us as we take a look at nature in ways that you've never seen before. Come travel with us as we go coast to coast to uncover some of the most interesting animals. And some of the most beautiful scenery that's offered outdoors. You can join us on our nature adventures right here on the MCPSS TV network. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this episode of Inside Education as we looked inside the classrooms of Mobile County Public Schools. For these and other stories, please visit mcpss.com and the Mobile County Public Schools Facebook page. Until next time, have a great day and remember, a well-educated mind can change the world. <laughs>